Welcome to Time of Death. This video is for informational purposes and in no way meant to glorify or condone violence. In today's video, we'll be discussing the murder of Antonio Rojas Perez. Perez was shot and killed on Sunday, May 26, 2013, in the 4200 block of East 1st Street in East LA, according to LA County Corner Records. Emir Rigoberto Acosta and Freddy Rojas were subsequently arrested and charged with the murder. The following is the evidence at trial. A number of witnesses testified to the shooting death of victim Antonio Rojas on May 25, 2013. Aureli testified that she and her husband, Baltazar, held a party in their backyard to celebrate the baptism and first birthday of their son. They had invited other Rojas family members and several close friends. Although defendant Freddy was Aureli's cousin, he was not among the invited guests. Nevertheless, Freddy arrived at the party with several companions. Aureli observed defendant Freddy help himself to beer and get more beer for his group. Aureli also observed Freddy approach the DJ and grab the back of his neck. While Freddy was holding him, the DJ announced, El Hoyo Maravilla. Recognizing this as the name of the local street gang, Aureli felt uncomfortable. When defendant Freddy continued to help himself to beer, Aureli told him that her husband or her brother would serve the group. Freddy angrily responded that Aureli's house was part of his neighborhood. Aureli's father, Jose, told Freddy to calm down. Freddy pushed Jose in the chest and repeated that it was his neighborhood. Aureli's brother, victim Antonio, also told defendant Freddy to calm down and stated that he didn't want any trouble. The victim told Freddy to go back to his friends. Freddy responded that he could do whatever he wanted because the house was part of his neighborhood. Freddy then punched the victim and the victim punched back. Four or five people tried to separate the two men. Freddy then shouted woo woo toward the direction of his friends, which Aureli took as a signal. Immediately, five men came to defendant Freddy's assistance and started fighting with other people. Aureli was struck and knocked to the ground unconscious. After she recovered, Aureli saw the victim on the ground with his wife next to him. People were screaming and running out of the backyard. Aureli saw defendant Freddy and one of his friends later identified as Mike Hoffman walking away. Aureli called the police and was informed that they already had been contacted. 10 to 15 minutes later, the police arrived and arrested defendant Freddy and Hoffman, who had been restrained by other guests. Baltazar's testimony corroborated that of his wife Aureli concerning the events leading up to the shooting. Freddy's friends came to assist him. Baltazar identified defendant Acosta as one of those friends. When the boyfriend of Baltazar's niece attempted to separate Freddy from the victim, Defendant Acosta broke a bottle over his head. Then Baltasar saw Defendant Acosta shoot the victim before running away and jumping over a fence. LA County Deputy Medical Examiner Pedro Ortiz conducted the autopsy of the victim and opined that the victim died as a result of a gunshot wound to the chest. Marco Iiza, a senior criminalist, testified that the bullet that killed the victim was fired from a 22 caliber handgun. It could not have been fired from a 9mm handgun. Detective House testified he recovered a 22 caliber cartridge casing at the crime scene. LA County Deputy Sheriff Fernando Galvan testified he responded to a radio call regarding shots being fired at Aureli's residence. When Galvan arrived at the location, he observed defendant Freddy and Hoffman being taken into custody by other officers. Hoffman's weapon, a 9mm handgun, was recovered and Galvan booked it into evidence. LA County Sheriff Sergeant Gina Egia testified that after Hoffman was arrested, she monitored the calls placed by Hoffman from jail. Sergeant Egia obtained a search warrant for an address associated with a phone number Hoffman had dialed. When the residence was searched on June 3rd, defendant Acosta was found hiding in a compartment located behind the refrigerator. Mike Hoffman testified for the prosecution. He stated that he had known defendant Acosta for 20 years and became acquainted with Freddy during the past three or four years. Although Hoffman was not a member of El Hoyo Maravilla, he knew defendants Acosta and Freddy were members with the moniker Silent and Chuco. Hoffman was originally charged with the murder of the victim. Pursuant to a cooperation agreement with the district attorney's office, Hoffman agreed to testify. Sergeant Aguilla testified as the prosecution's gang expert regarding El Hoyo Maravilla. She testified that Eloyo Maravilla is a criminal street gang claiming territory in East LA that included Aureli's residence. The gang's primary activities included robberies, assault with firearms, possession of narcotics, and weapons violations. 
Given a hypothetical question that mirrored the evidence, Sergeant Aguilla opined that the shooting was committed in association with a criminal street gang and for the benefit of the gang. Defendants were jointly tried. Following the trial, the jury convicted defendant Acosta of second degree murder and being a felon in possession of a firearm. It acquitted defendant Freddy of murder, but found him guilty of the lesser included offense of voluntary manslaughter. With respect to both defendants, the jury found true the gang and firearm allegations. The court sentenced defendant Amir Acosta to 40 years to life and defendant Freddy Rojas to 22 years in state prison. In 2022, defendant Rojas filed a petition for resentencing under Penal Code Section 1172.6. The trial court granted the petition vacated defendant's conviction and resentenced him to the midterm of three years on the target offense of assault with force likely to cause great bodily injury. The court awarded defendant the same number of custody credits he was awarded in his initial sentencing and was released on time served. Antonio Rojas Perez was 24 years old at the time of death. 